Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the Sharjah Research Technology and Innovation uh, Industry Lab in collaboration with uh, 3M. Uh, we thank you for your time and for accepting the uh, invitation to be with us in this uh, exciting webinar. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome uh, my friend here, Mr. Christoph Pernis from 3D, uh, from 3M, uh, 3M, who is an expert in sustainability and in the topic of sustainable development in general, which of course, it not, doesn't only touch the sustainability part, but also it has an economic impact and an economic element into it, and also a technology uh, element and a social element. Uh, I apologize for uh, being a little bit late. I was trying to change it from one PC to another. Uh, so without further ado, I would like to, again, welcome you. And uh, maybe I will allow uh, Christoph to say a few words before we start. The plan today is to do an introductory uh, uh, presentation about SRTIP to set up the uh, context for this webinar and then hand over the webinar to our special guest here to take us through the journey and the innovation of 3M. And then by the end of his presentation, we will allow 10 to 15 minutes question and answer. Thank you very much. And Christoph, maybe you wanna say a little bit something about you? Yes, well, first of all, I would like to take this opportun opportunity to thank you all very much for allowing 3M to, um, to be part of this webinar series. And we're always very excited to be able to talk about the stuff that we do and, and the challenges that we face. So I'm really looking forward in the next 20 or 30 minutes or so to give you a highlight of 3M sustainability uh, activities. Um, so I hope you'll, you'll like it and uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, to getting lots of questions as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christopher. So I will uh, and then go and start the presentation today and I will try to make it quick because this is uh, Christoph and 3M day. We are very proud to uh, be able to do this with 3M. It's a global company uh, which has uh, contributed uh, uh, in a great way to uh, advancement of technology in various area, as I said earlier, an area related to our society, an area related to our education, to our uh, economy. So we are very proud today to talk about uh, environmental technologies uh, specifically, but in the context of uh, sustainability. Uh, uh, SRTIP uh, uh, by itself is a manifestation of sustainable development. So when Sharjah government uh, uh, and his highness uh, embarked on launching this project, he had four uh, elements or four uh, uh, corners to this sustainable development umbrella. He wanted to develop a project that will ensure technological su sustainability he wanted to develop a project that will contribute to economic sustainability. And he wanted to produce a project that will produce uh, 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 social sustainability. And last but not least, environmental sustainability. So what you see in front of you is the Sharjah Research and Technology Park uh, master plan, of course, uh, with our headquarter, which is almost done. And we are due to move to this open innovation technology park which as I said, embed sustainable development as an integral part of doing business. And that's why maybe you will see in the corner, uh, uh, some sort of a lobby with a lot of trees. And the concept of this is really savanna. So we are very proud of this project. We are still in the beginning of this project, but we have a great hope and a great aspiration. And we can only reach this by working with the great com companies like 3M. The, Objectives of the park, as I said earlier, it's set under the umbrella of sustainable development. So we want to create an innovation ecosystem that will foster and promote technology transfer and technology commercialization and innovation uh, in general. We also want to ensure 
social sustainability. We know the Middle East is full of young people, talented young people. So we want to ensure and generate employment for those young people. We want to equip them with uh, next generation skills to be able to, to venture into new opportunities and start a new activities. We want to catalyze the knowledge economy. We believe new technologies, whether related to 3D or artificial intelligence or other are there. We can capture and catalyze in them. And we want to invest in the future, of course, and enforce the 3P, making sure that we, when whatever we do, we sustain profit, planet, and people. This is a key corner of our creed and, and the way that we do things. And I think we share this also with 3M. We believe in partnership. We have a global vision, but with a regional mission. We believe that this we can only reach and be able to do this by working with countries, with institutions, with R&D, and with companies. And that's the open innovation formula that we have. We focus in six areas, water technology, production design and architecture, mobility, long uh, logistic and smart city, digitization, renewable energy, and environmental technology. We also have a focus on healthcare, but for the sake of today, we will focus on environmental technology and sustainability. These are growing topics everywhere. We believe the Middle East has a lot of opportunities when it comes to these six areas. Now, speaking about the type of projects we have in the park currently having, this is, for example, a great manifestation of sustainability. This is a company called Merlin, which basically launched its hydroponics, aquaponics, solar, and water technology within the park. So as you know, our region is a desert. We could not grow anything, but by developing technologies like hydroponics and aquaponics, we are able now to produce vegetables and produce food. So that ensures sustainability. A second type of companies we have, uh, companies in artificial intelligence. Maybe this is with focus on psychology, but it also touches other elements that we are also using these technologies to uh, be deployed in other projects related to sustainability. We have also projects related to health in general, but this is in focus on women health, especially where, with, 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 with topics related to uncommunicated diseases. We have projects that mimic future technologies like the virtual reality and augmented reality and mixed reality. We are very proud that our building or open innovation hub will host one of the largest AR, VR experiential center in the region. We also ensure sustainability by promoting renewable energies. This is a photovoltaic R&D center that we hope out of this to develop new and uh, tailor-made photovoltaic technologies to our region that can also deal with our climate and the difficulties we have today. Part of our project, we also have an enabler, which is Charger Open Innovation Lab. This is a lab that will allow students, faculty, companies to come and co-create and start new ventures and new technologies that we hope to basically create new opportunities. We are very proud during the last month or during the really the peak of COVID to be able to use 3D printing to create face shield that we donated to police force, to healthcare. And it was amazing project for us on how can we deploy technology quickly to address a challenge or an opportunity. We are very proud to have fantastic uh, entrepreneurs in the region that they have based in the park. This is CAFU, the first regional fuel delivery application that you can order your fuel with mobile and they can come to your house or offices and fuel it 24 hours. We are also a test bed with, for different type of uh, uh, technologies. This is an autonomous bus that we work with uh, to get there to promote and, 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 and the 5G is a key topic. We are working with Nokia, with Do to implement different use case for 5G, we have a couple of use cases that we are working on, one in, in, on healthcare, but the other one also in crowd management. We are proud in the, in the park to be probably one of the largest additive manufacturing platform in the region. So at the moment in the park, we print three types of 3D technologies, one for plastic, one for metal, and the third one for houses. So this is also ensures sustainability of manufacturing 
So we can produce anything we want locally. This is the house that we printed using 3D technologies. Of course, that means again, sustainability because we will be using less cement, less waste, more efficient time, and even less people. We are very proud of this project is a next generation transport technologies, which again uses less land, less materials, less energy. We started this project and we launched phase one, which is this small port, 400 meters. And as we speak now, we are working on three kilometers of cargoes for next generation technologies related to transport. As I said earlier, we believe in partnerships. So we are in discussion with the United Nations Technology Innovation Lab to host their labs in the park to cater for the whole region. And this to ensure partnership with innovation labs from all over the world. So this is a quick, uh, presentation about the park. We work with different companies like ABB. We have their Miomis robotics in the park. Intel, we work with 5G. And also we have leading regional company like Merlin and MNSA and AI Direction and others that we are very proud of this partnership. We consider ourselves to be a startup that is very keen to grow. And we can only grow by working with real partners and partners who share the same vision and mission that we want, which is ensure sustainable development in everything we do. So this is a, a, the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. And now I would like to pass the, uh, uh, the platform to my special guest here, uh, Christoph. Uh, Christoph, the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Hussein. Much. So I'm going to try and share my screen. There we go. So share. Hopefully, you would now see the first page of a presentation. So once again, thank you very, very much for um, having me um, on today's call. Um, it's an honor to be able to do this. A very good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, you know, my name, as I said, is Christoph Behrens and I am um, the Sustainability and Community Relations Manager um, for Europe, Middle East and Africa. So in the next uh, 20 minutes or so, what I will try to do is give you a flavor of um, environmental aspects and sustainability that um, are part of everyday life at, at 3M um, and hopefully also inspire you um, to get some, some good ideas um, for yourself as well and, and ways on how potentially we can even collaborate in the future. So first, maybe a few words about 3M, right? So, so th for those people who don't know 3M, if we are an, uh, an American company that was established in 1902. So we've been going for quite a while already. Um, so we, we operate globally, as Mr. Hussein was saying. Um, we uh, have sales in almost every country in the world. We actually have operations in 70 countries in the world. Um, you know, our 55,000 plus product portfolio is, is generating about $32 billion in sales. You know, I, I just said 55,000 products and those are actually spread over four business groups um, that I will uh, talk to you in, in just a second about. Innovation is extremely important for 3M and that kind of becomes obvious when you see the number of patents that we have. We have over 120,000 patents and actually every year about 3,000 new patents are added to that. So, you know, this is how, you know, innovation, research and developments are really key drivers uh, for how 3M operates. And in fact, you know, around one third of our product sales is generated by products that did not even exist five years ago. So that's how, you know, we continuously focus on getting that innovation engine going. As I said, we have about 55,000 products. Um, and of course, you know, many people will know 3M from post-it notes, from scotch tape, and today, of course, also from respirators and face masks with uh, the 
current COVID crisis, you know, 3M hasn't been on the news more uh, than, than recently. So, uh, but those are only, you know, a small part of, of our product portfolio. In fact, we've got four big business groups. And one of them is safety and industrial, um, where we are talking about, you know, personal protective equipment, but also about abrasives, industrial adhesives, and those kind of products. Right. In our transportation and electronics business, we are serving the automotive markets, uh, the energy markets, etc. For healthcare, we are working with dentists, hospitals and doctors to provide them with products to, um, to help people get better. And then, of course, consumer um, offers the brands that people know um, basically from, from going to the shop in, in things like post-it notes um, and scotch tape. Sustainability has for a very long time been an extremely important aspect of what 3M does and how 3M operates. Right? So, and, and this is really very much linked to our corporate vision. 3M's vision says that 3M technology is advancing every company, 3M products are enhancing every home, and 3M innovation is improving every life. And it's when you talk about this improving every life that really the message and the spirit of sustainability comes through, right? And that is also what is now more than ever before, the message from our top management and our CEO, Mike Roman, is really positioning 3M as a purpose-driven enterprise. We do the right thing because we need to do the right thing, right? We want to work with our partners, with customers, with stakeholders across the globe to ensure that our innovation can really help improve every life. So this is really the key message that uh, 3M wants to spread um, and that basically is, is carried out by all 96 3Mers across the globe. And in fact, we have a very, very long history to build on as well, right? So in the 1930s, we were one of the first companies that engaged in setting up a disability scheme for employees, right? So a long-term sickness leave, we were one of the first to do that, right? In the 1970s, we actually had our first environmental program, which was well before any other company was talking about environmental issues or, you know, caring about the environment. And in fact, you know, it kind of links in all of the economic parts as well, because Mr. Hussein was mentioning the three Ps, profit, planet, people. But in fact, 3P means something different for 3M, right? For, for 3M, 3P means pollution prevention pace. And this is an iconic program that was established by one of our scientists in the 1970s. And basically he thought that, you know, whenever we have waste and pollution, we lose money, right? Because we won't use our raw materials to make the products that our customer needs and we will be throwing away things. So if we can avoid this pollution, then we will eventually also get some economic profit out of that, right? So, and by taking that approach for now more than 45 years, you know, we have been able to save more than 2 million tons of pollution uh, of being spread in the environment. So this is long before people were talking about sustainability, right, or environmental protection. In the 1990s, we also started setting our own environmental goals, right? So that is just to show you how sustainability for many, many years has been an integral part of how we operate. And always the same goal, the same vision, improving every life, right? Now, in 2018, we kind of changed the way that we talked about sustainability. And the reason why we did that is because 3M is a company that centers around science. We want to use science and scientific data and scientific principles to do the right thing to improve people's lives. So then we, we thought, okay, if we take a look at the typical sustainability definition, right, social, environmental, economic, can we translate that into something that every 3M person around the globe will understand? And that is why we started centering our approach around three big focus areas. And we want to use science for circular economy. We want to use science 
to help fight climate change. And we want to use our science to help the communities around us. Those are now the three focus areas that basically cover all of 3M's aspirations and activities in the area of sustainability. When we look at the circular economy, we want to ensure that more and more products can be recycled, contain recycled content, can be reused or refurbished or repaired, and basically we can avoid waste from being generated. But that means we will also have to change business models. We will have to change the way that we interact with our partners and our customers. So this is a big challenge for every company around the globe. In climate change, you know, I don't think that anyone argues that the climate is in some sort of a crisis, whatever that is, right? But, you know, we have to do our very best to fight that crisis and to hopefully overcome it. And in communities, we work with communities, we have operations in communities, so we also have to ensure that we use our science to make sure that we do the right thing to help those people around us. And the example that you can see on the screen there is a, a great example from um, our colleagues in Korea. Um, in Korea, people saw that, you know, a lot of accidents involving children happened in front of schools. So we then used our science and our film technology to basically take a look, a closer look at crossroads and to really make children very, very visible when they approach a crossroad by just putting that film there and, you know, making sure that they jump out. And we saw that there was a dramatic, a significant drop in the number of accidents involving children around schools. That is how science can make a difference. And that's how it can make a difference on all levels. One of the sustainability goals that we have is to ensure that we help our customers to achieve their own sustainability goals. And in fact, we want to ensure that by using our technologies, our customers can avoid 250 million tons of greenhouse gas emissions by 2025. Last year alone, 3M Technologies allowed our customers to save more than 17 million tons of greenhouse gas emissions. That's the equivalent of taking 3 million cars off the road. So we were really, really pleased with that result. And the fact that we are as diverse as a business as we are really helps us because that means that we can work with our partners and our customers to find solutions to increase energy efficiency. When we have buildings, you know, and they need to be cooled in the summer and heated in winter, what we can do is we can apply a 3M window film so that the heat stays out in the summer and the, the heat stays in in the winter, significantly reducing the cost for air conditioning, significantly reducing the cost for heating. In those areas where there is not too much light and there is a lot of artificial light that has to be used in buildings, we also have film technologies that draws the light in from the outside and reflects it within the building so that you have to put less lights on, you know, also helping to increase energy efficiency. But also looking at renewable energy, it was a topic that was touched on by Mr. Hussein as well. You know, everyone knows solar panels and wind farms and those kind of things today. But you know, the technology that goes into them is amazing, right? We have mirror films that we apply to the inside of a solar panel, and they basically double the amount of light that goes on the electricity connectors. So the efficiency of a solar panel is significantly increased, and you can get much more electricity uh, from the sun than not using that film. The same applies to wind blades. You know, those wind blades can go at a speed of 300 kilometers an hour when they go at full speed. So that means that even the smallest particles of dust, they can create an impact on those wind blades. So 3M offers films, coatings and tapes to protect those wind blades, which means that they require significantly less downtime and they can produce much more renewable energy. Looking at food safety, you know, you would think you have to do a test in a laboratory and then you know you start checking how you can improve but how you conduct that test is also very important 
right? We developed solutions that use significantly less water, that use significantly less energy, and that are much faster to detect any bacteria that are on the surface. So it increases the efficiency and it reduces the environmental impact. And knowing that there are 3 billion people around the world that don't have constant access to electricity, you know, we have these solutions to double the capacity of the electricity grid that exists today by using different types of cables, using science to um, ensure that we have less losses, you know, and get more electricity from where we, uh, where it is generated to where it is actually used. Today's COVID crisis is also a good example of how, you know, when personal protection is involved, 3M can really offer great solutions. But now we're looking at the next challenge, right? Everyone will see, you know, that when dealing with uh, face masks and respirators and surgical masks and so on, we are also generating quite a bit of waste. So the next challenge is going to be how can we solve that? Right? And then knowing that many, many people don't have access to clear potable water is also a big issue that we are trying to resolve, or at least do our part to help and resolve through our purification business. So this is just a grasp of all of the uh, solutions that, that we can provide. Right? You know, and, and this is making a massive difference when it comes to um, reducing the environmental impact of our companies. And of course, one of the things that we do is offer the products and the technologies that help our customers succeed with their sustainability goals. But also as a company, we have to do the right thing and we have to ensure that our R&D engine continues to work day and night. That is why in 2019, immediately following the launch of the sustainability strategic framework, with the science for community, science for climate, science for circular, 3M also committed that every new product that enters our commercialization process will need to have some sort of a sustainability benefit. So that means that for every product that we will be launching in the future, you know, there will be some sort of positive impact on, uh, for the planet. We also became a member of the um, Circular Economy 100 group, so the Alan MacArthur Foundation, you know, the front runner in the area of sustainability and especially circular economy. So with that partnership, we are really trying to also get um, the network necessary to really help build a circular world. Air pollution is a big, big issue, right? So we also wanted to help with our technology and our solutions in a partnership with Clean Air Asia to ensure that, you know, the cities in a number of cities in India can really benefit from the science to get cleaner air. And in our journey towards moving to renewable electricity of 100% of our operations, Last year, we actually announced that our headquarters in the United States is now fully running on renewable electricity. That was a big, big accomplishment. And where our 2025 sustainability goal actually uh, aimed to be at 25% renewable electricity, we are currently already above 30. So we changed our goal so that we will have 50% renewable electricity by 2025, and we will work towards 100% by 2050. Finally, there is also the social area. So, and we feel that our science can really make a difference. So we committed to providing 300,000 hours of volunteering to those people that need us most and that need our help. Right? And that's the way that we are trying to do our bit as a company, not just as a product and solutions provider. And of course, science is at the heart of everything that 3M does. So we have to also take an important role when we are developing the scientists of tomorrow. Right? When we are speaking to young people now, we have to ensure that they are 
committed to science, that they are engaged in scientific experiments, because we will need those scientists if we want to continue to be a science-based company in the future. Now, the big question is, of course, you know, we've got all of these solutions, we've got all of these products that are making a big impact. So the question is, how do we do that, right? And basically, what we see is that the customer has to be put at the center of our operations, right? We need to do whatever we do with the customer at the back of our mind. And then we believe that we have three strengths that really help us to build those pieces of innovation that are needed to make a difference. The first one is to ensure that we get the right insights. And that idea actually came from William McKnight, who joined 3M as an assistant bookkeeper in 1907, but that's, he stayed with 3M until 1966. And for many, many years, he was president and chairman of the board. And his idea actually was let people make mistakes, hire good people, and let them take an initiative. Let them look for things that they feel are important. And if they make a mistake, that's fine, you know, because at least we will have learned what we shouldn't be doing. And it is that culture, that idea, that has really driven 3M's innovation mindset, right? constantly looking for new ideas because we feel, we have this gut feeling that it's the right idea, right? That is also how 3M developed what is called the 15% culture. Every 3M employee is allowed to spend 15% of their working time on projects that they feel are important. And actually, that is how a number of our most sustainable products have been created and invented. Right? What you can see on the right hand side is a little girl sleeping in a car that is fitted with a uh, window film, you know, that makes sure that the comfort in the car is higher, that it is not heating up as fast, but also that it is safer. Because if, a, if for example, a brick hits the window, the window won't shatter, it will stay in place. On the left hand side, you can see a grinding wheel. And normally when you use grinding wheels, you know, these rotors are, are, are turning around very, very fast and are putting a lot of pressure on, this, on, on, on your wrists and so on. But this technology that was put in here, you know, you can see those little pyramids in the back. That is actually a microscopic view of that um, abrasive. And as the wheels turn around and you grind the surface, those, um, corners will stay sharp because they will constantly break off. And that means that your product will last five times longer. It will be much easier on your wrists to use it. And it will not heat up as much, which means that your equipment will last longer as well. You know, so there are a number of sustainability benefits related to that product, apart from the fact that it is easier to use and much faster as well. The culture of collaboration is the second big, big thing in 3M, right? And for that, we have a number of technical forums to drive this internal collaboration, getting great people together to ensure that we work on the right things, that we exchange ideas, and that one person can build on someone else's idea, right? We've got 51 technology platforms in 3M, and they can be combined in any way possible to come up with the, the, what appear to be the strangest solutions, but they are really making a difference. And they are really seen as a big tool for collaboration. That's how um, our innovation engine continues to go. And within that technical forum, there are different chapters. And one of those chapters is the green chemistry chapter. Right? And that is really where our scientists are looking at potential solutions on how we can do things differently, how we can make an impact. Now, many people will know, for example, the Thinsulate uh, insulation material that goes in jackets, in gloves, in ski boots, and those kind of things. Well, we now came up with a 100% recycled version of that insulation material. And in fact, we only use plastic bottles to create those fibers. 
So not only do we make a difference there, but we really can also fight the plastics challenge that exists in the world today. Also, when you look at things like aeroplanes, you know, they, we, the way that they are, are made is very, very impressive, but we use primers and coatings and all those kind of things. And a lot of nasty chemicals are uh, involved there. We came up with a structural adhesive primer that is now free of chrome and that is water-based, therefore replacing a solvent-based chemical. So, you know, much easier to use, much less dangerous, um, and therefore making a big sustainability impact. And then we also have an award-winning product um, that can be used in the manufacture of uh, roof tiles. And those are smog-reducing roofing granules. And basically, it's little spheres, little balls that are incorporated in the roof tile, and they absorb smog from the air. So that means that air is being purified just by putting the right tiles on your roof. Those are just a few examples of all of the products that are coming out of this green chemistry chapter. So, and all of that is actually leading to the fact that 3M is being recognized as a company that takes sustainability very seriously. You know, looking at corporate social responsibility, at ethical conduct, conduct, you know, we are very proud that we are where we are today and knowing that we have been there for a very long time as well. You know, it's only when you see things like this that you know that you are really doing what's right and that you are making a positive impact on the world. And we really hope that over time we will be able to continue to do that. So with that, I would like to thank you so much again for giving me the opportunity to present here today. I could go on for hours and hours and give you so many more examples, but you know, we have to uh, cut it short somehow. Um, but if anyone has any questions, of course, do feel free to put them in the uh, Q&A. So thank you very, very much. Um, and looking forward to, uh, to hearing from you soon and to, to speaking to you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christophe, for this really amazing and uh, eye-opening presentation about what uh, really an innovation company. I, can, I was thinking while you were speaking, if I, did, if I to describe 3M, you know, what kind of description I would, I would, I would have, because, you know, this company uh, is, is an interesting company, actually. And I think uh, what really sells this company is the technology and the science that is actually commercialized and it's produced, whether it's a small or big. So it's a, uh, it's very obvious that science is really is an integral part of the development of this company. So uh, uh, really amazing products, amazing, uh, 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 I would say commercialization of science to put it into uh, those three focus areas that you have. So really thank you for sharing uh, this uh, amazing um, you know, insight with us and with the audience. I will, uh, with your permission, I would uh, go and try to get some questions okay. and, uh, and, and come back to you. So there are different questions. Uh, this says, what is 3M mission to promote product stewardship for your product in terms of circular economy? And that to well, well, it is, it is a very important element uh, of sustainability. And, and this is also a message brought by our, our CEO, but also our chief sustainability officer, is that when you really want to make sustainability successful, every employee has to get involved, right? So, you know, product stewardship is a very important function in safeguarding our products from a, an, an environmental, health, safety, regulatory, but also sustainability point of view. You know, those people are heavily involved in the development of our new products. Uh, they are heavily involved in, you know, the composition of our products and so on. So, you know, every function and product stewardship in particular has a very important role to play when it comes to sustainability. You know, and it's, it's really getting all of those stakeholders together, the business units, the product stewards, you know, but also the, the salespeople, our marketing people, and even our customers and other stakeholders to build a sustainability roadmap. 
and to do what is relevant for those customers and those markets and those regions in the world. So, you know, not just product stewardship, but everyone really has a very important role to play. And this will only uh, increase in the future. Thank you very much. So I'll take uh, another question for me, which is, says, is, us, is, is RTIP is open for researchers to use 3D printers using recycled plastic on research projects? Uh, the answer is yes. We, at the moment, working with uh, both the American University of Sharjah and one of the largest construction company in the whole of the Middle East, CCC, uh, and the, uh, uh, the, the, the Meet, which is the 3D printing company in the park to look at different materials uh, for 3D with relation to construction. But of course, this applies also to plastic and apply to other uh, material related to 3D. Uh, a question to you, Christopher says, could you explain if you are doing anything to clear our ocean from plastic? And I will ask you another question related to what is the latest product or initiative in the packaging industry for 3M? Right. Um, well, taking a look at, at plastics, plastics in general is, is a big issue, right? It, it's a big issue globally. Um, and it's probably uh, quite controversial to say that, you know, the use of plastics as such is not necessarily a bad thing. The bad thing is that plastics are made to last a lifetime and we very often only use them once. And that's, that's the key issue. So when, when we get the question on, you know, how are we going to get plastics out of the ocean, we will definitely have to take a certain role there. But in the first instance, we will have to ensure that our products and our solutions are developed in such a way that they don't depend on plastics too much. And especially the use of single-use plastics is something that we should avoid in, in the future. Um, you know, very often people now refer to plastics as the necessary and the unnecessary plastics. And it's especially the unnecessary uh, necessary plastics that people have to avoid, right? So, you know, that is, it's, it, everyone there has a role to play. It starts with mindset also, you know, consumers have a very important role to play there. Companies as well. We know that all of these initiatives are starting. Um, you know, ocean plastics are now being uh, captured from the oceans uh, slowly but steadily, but there isn't a huge supply yet of recuperated and recycled plastics coming from ocean waste, right? So, you know, also that uh, capacity and capability will have to increase. When we consider things like um, packaging solutions, right, we, we now have um, a product available, you know, we've got a lot of closing and masking systems um, that, that are uh, available in general, you know, packaging tapes and things like that, where we are really looking at making them um, more sustainable by using bio-based materials so that boxes that are using our solutions can also be recycled with the tape on it and so on. So that's that's one area. Um, another area that um, where we are working on a very very new product is um, part of the Scotch brand. It's called Flex and Seal, and that is basically kind of like a wrap um, to go around products um, that sticks to itself, so that you can avoid the use of boxes. And that means that you just wrap the product with the packaging material. Um, and by not having to, um, you know, have all of the boxes stacked, by not having to have filling material in all of the boxes and so on and so forth, you can significantly reduce um, the amount of waste that is being generated. Now, there, the very first solution that we uh, brought to the market was itself plastic based. So now what we are doing is we're starting this journey and as a next generation, we are now considering how we can find a recyclable version of that same product and so on. So also for us, you know, it's very often a matter of getting started. And then once we get started, we continue to improve. And, you know, that is going to be the same with packaging materials, but also with the whole plastics issue. Thank you. Uh, there is a question from uh, Mohammed is asking, how can 3M support universities, research centers and entrepreneurs in the Middle East and North Africa region? 
uh, which have talents in many fields. Uh, where did it go? Uh, uh, so, so in general, what 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 is the M is doing when it comes to uh, supporting talents and universities and research centers? And what are the plan dedicated? And if, if there is any fund uh, uh, available for this? Mm -hmm. Well, 3M is, is working in general um, a lot with research institutes, with universities, uh, with students on a number of different products. And, and, you know, these are driven by the business units so they can go from one end of the spectrum all the way to the other. Um, for example, our office in the Netherlands is on the grounds of the technical university in Delft, right? So, you know, and, and that is really sparking those types of collaborations. So we're all about that collaboration. And of course, if there are, you know, universities or research institutes that have certain programs where they feel 3M technology can make a difference, um, and, and we, we should look into certain partnerships. They can always reach out uh, through their local 3M subsidiary uh, to identify potential ways of cooperation. And if they exist, I'm sure that um, our R&D community, our business community would be very, very happy to, to engage in those things. Okay, so uh, thank you, uh, Christoph. Uh, we will take a few more questions. So there is a questions I think are a link to each other uh, says uh, uh, on the uh, car carbon footprint uh, and what is 3M is doing on this, but also there is a, a, a question about, uh, you know, knowing 3M's view on carbon emission and of setting footprint. So the same question, I guess, yes. Right. Right. Well, we have been monitoring our scope one and two emissions for a very long time, right? And, and actually since uh, 2002, we have been able to reduce our own greenhouse gas emissions with 68% in absolute value. So that is whilst growing our business, we were still able uh, to get that reduction, uh, which we're all very, very proud of. Um, you know, so, so those measurements are, are definitely happening. Uh, part of our uh, sustainability goals is also talking about energy efficiency, waste management, a greenhouse gas emission reduction, and so on. So, so we definitely also have expectations uh, from the corporate level um, for all of our sites to engage in those types of activities. When it comes to our products, um, we do have the capability in-house to run life cycle assessments. We have teams in, uh, in Europe and the US uh, that engage in that. Um, but of course, with a portfolio of 55,000 products, it's simply impossible to do these life cycle assessments and carbon footprint exercises for, for the entire portfolio. Um, so there we are taking um, kind of like a prioritized approach. Uh, depending on the business needs and so on. Um, we, uh, we run carbon footprint analyses on a number of our products, especially when uh, we have products in our portfolio that help with the energy efficiency for our customers. You know, then we use life cycle assessment also to assess how much savings and how much greenhouse gas emission savings they can generate. So it is a very, very important element of our sustainability positioning. Um, and, you know, it is a science-based kind of approach to positioning our products. And, and that is something that we all love to do, of course. Uh, I would like to ask questions. Um, most uh, international companies uh, conduct their researches in their headquarters, either, you know, in America or Europe and some of them in China. Uh, of course, more and more, and we see the Middle East uh, region is growing region, and uh, uh, of course, in the in the in the in the time of innovation, most government and societies uh, uh, expect to produce uh, uh, tailor-made technologies to our to their own uh, environment, etc. What is uh, 3M uh, vision when it comes to the Middle East and with relations? to science, since you are a science-led organization? Well, for us, it is very important that we apply science in light with our vision to, to improve lives. And um, that is also in light of what our customers want us to do. So that is why across the world, we have many um, customer innovation centers where we get customers uh, to visit us um, 
on a very, very regular basis, daily really, to work with us on solutions to their problems. So, you know, science and a, and a specific scientific solution is not necessarily a one fits all kind of solution, right? So we need to be able to localize where needed and to globalize where possible. Um, and this is where these innovation centers that we now have all over the world, um, including um, in, in the UAE, um, you know, to, to invite those customers to have these types of discussions with us. And the great thing about being a global company is that we have expertise all around the world as well. Um, and, and from that perspective, with that expertise, we can build with the spirit of collaboration, as I, as I presented earlier, um, you know, regardless of where we are, we can build those relationships to, to make a difference. Um, okay. but, but those innovation centers are definitely a starting point there. And that is something that 3M has invested heavily in over the last couple of years. So I will take uh, maybe a couple of more questions, if you don't mind. Uh, sure. so, so I guess this question is related to my question, maybe. It says, what about the dust and solar panel? So for example, in the Middle East, as you know, one of the, one of the uh, 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 negative aspect of the solar is this uh, you know, dust being you know, attached to the solar panel. So what is 3M doing when it comes to solar panels but to solve, to solve this challenge? Mm -hmm. Well. As far as I know, because obviously I don't know all of the products within 3M's portfolio, but as far as I know, our, our uh, focus in the solar industry has been very much around increasing the efficiency of uh, the energy generation. <laughs> Right. We also see technologies of the kind of like self-cleaning, um, self-cleaning surfaces for solar panels and so on. So the, the thing is that, of course, when we speak to a specific industry and we are a supplier into a specific industry, we are only very often a, a very small part of uh, of the final product. So, you know, what what we what our products are used for in, in that specific sector are to ensure that the solar light that comes in is used in the best possible way, right? And that we get the, the most out of that sunlight that we can get. And then of course, you know, if those um, uh, contacts, you know, get uh, dusty and, and therefore less efficient, then we will need to find ways as well um, to, to avoid that and to improve that. It may be that 3M is, is in some R&D lab in the world is working on those kind of things, uh, but it could definitely be in a, a very interesting way to, to further increase the efficiency of those panels. Thank you. So my, my last question uh, from Mr. Ali is saying, are you working on any radioactive waste materials? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, within our manufacturing and supply chain organization, um, you know, all of the waste streams are definitely accounted for. Um, whether we do have radioactive waste, to be honest, I, I don't know. Um, but of course, if we are um, getting that, then if we would have to deal with it, you know, um, in, a, in a highly regulated way. So um, it is possible, but I could not give you a definitive answer on that. Thank you very much, Christophe. My, my last question, which I'm very curious about, the wall behind you, is it a 3M new uh, uh, painting or <laughs> wallpaper or what is it? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> no, that is that is basically just the wallpaper in my study that is uh, sometimes uh, allowing me to be quite zen. I just turn okay. around then and I, I basically, you know, <laughs> kind of... <laughs> so I, so, so I, I understand you are based in uh, Belgium. Yes, that's correct. So I happened to visit a long time ago a beautiful project in Belgium and the, the wall behind you uh, reminded me it's called... Uh, um, living tomorrow right so right. had a lot of interesting stuff there including um uh, new painting technology for swarovski and others so i was mm -hmm. wondering if you have the same thing behind you but <laughs> <laughs> no i i just i i have to disappoint you it's it's just ordinary wallpaper <laughs> well it's a beautiful one and uh i would like to take this opportunity again to thank you for this uh, wonderful session uh, we learned a lot about new technologies and the role of science in developing 
uh, new opportunities and new solutions that really uh, uh, ensures sustainability, whether it's social or economic. Of course, the concept of uh, uh, sharing sustainability is, 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 or sharing economy is a big concept. And we are very glad to see companies like you really at the forefront of uh, this vision. So I, I don't know if you want to say anything before we, we finish, but uh, I, I'd like to thank you. If there's anything you want to end up with. No, I, you know, just as, as a closing remark, I, I also want to thank you all again for allowing 3M to, um, to do this and, and to be part of these webinar series. It's, it's always lovely to be able to spread the message and, and, you know, sometimes we just have to be proud of what we do and, and ensure that we get that message across so that we can hopefully also inspire people and companies to do the same. And it is very easy when you are in a company to, to take things for granted um, but when you take a little bit of distance, and that applies to everyone on the line today, you know, take a little bit of distance, take a look at what you're doing, and you will most likely be impressed with what you see. Thank you very much. And I also like to take uh, this opportunity to thank uh, the 3M team in the UAE and Dubai for uh, really facilitating this and allowing us to also to meet you and to organize this webinar. So thank you very much for the team in, in UAE and in Dubai for, for, for supporting us with this. And also the thanks goes to our team at SRTIP as well. With this, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And I hope to see you soon again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.